first of all, how did you find your voice when you were starting your show? Because I know you went in and pitched a show, but you, you really took the bull by the horns. You, I talk about how this is a mood board of a show, and every bit of research I do just shows how much you knew yourself and the show you wanted to make, which I love. Well, uh, that's very kind of you to say. I mean, we... I think what we knew is that we didn't have a luxury of time. Um, you know, I hadn't... I hadn't been on an American talk show um, until I got the job of being a sort of late-night talk show host. I'd never been on one of those shows. I'd never really been on American TV. I'd never done any of those things. So for, for quite a long time, I found myself saying, no one knows who I am. I have never been on Saturday Night Live. I'm not on The Daily Show. No one knows who I am or what I can do. This is impossible. And then what you do is you go, well, anything that we're looking at now as a negative can be a positive. And suddenly, if you take the very same phrase and go, no one knows who I am, no one knows what I can do here, if you go, well, wait, no one knows who I am and nobody knows what I can do here. And that actually then becomes incredibly exciting. Are you the type of person that has a fear of getting fired from a job you love? Oh, constantly. I even, the first, when we moved here, my wife and I, we had two kids at that point, and I wouldn't allow us to buy furniture. We rented all of our furniture because I said to my wife, Julia, I said, I'm going to get fired. This won't work. Oh and as God. soon as we get fired, we'll just want to get back to London. So we don't want to be lumbered with a couch. <laughs> and I did that for two years. And then eventually my wife was like, please, can we buy some furniture? And I was like, OK, I think we're safe to buy furniture now. But yeah, but that's been every day of my adult life, really. I've thought I'm going to get fired at some point. It's just refreshing to hear that you felt that way because I joke about it all the time, but I'm not really joking. I'm like, no, I'm getting fired. And it's just a, like a co <laughs> comedic mechanism of being afraid that I'm going to lose this at any second. But then I think that's quite a healthy point of view because I think outside of even work, just in life, if you can constantly try to Google Earth yourself, realize where you are, realize what you're doing, fundamentally hang on to the very things that are important. So counting those blessings and checking your privileges and all those things, I think are a really useful and necessary thing to do, especially if you're doing the job that you're doing, the job that I do at the moment, which is where you have to come out every day and go, well, here I am. And this is how I feel. And there's a responsibility to that. But the more free you are to just go, oh, like I actually think that's one of the few positives you could take from coronavirus is if you and I had talked a year ago, I'd say, how are you doing? And you go, I'm great. Everything's great. And I'd go, same. Everything's fantastic. And actually, there's been an amazing thing that's happened over this last six, seven months where I'll talk to friends of mine at home and I'll go, how are you doing? And they'll go, do you know what? I'm struggling, to be honest. I'm struggling. And you go, oh, that's a great thing, to be able to say, oh, this is, this is how I feel. And that's a really lovely thing that I hope we don't lose when we're the other side of this. I couldn't agree more.